What's up YouTube? Have you ever thought that maybe you should stop using Photoshop? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and I'm here to talk about three reasons you should stop using Photoshop. Or more specifically, three things you should stop using Photoshop for. If you're using Photoshop for these three things, you need to rethink it and start thinking about using another app. Photoshop's a fantastic program that has been being used for a long time. I myself have been using it for going on probably almost two decades. But here's the thing with Photoshop is it's really meant for photo composition. But because Photoshop is so well known, it's ended up being just kind of picked up as the default by a lot of people for a lot of different things that it wasn't really built to do. Stop using Photoshop if you're using it for these things. The first one is graphic design. I always see people trying to use Photoshop for graphic design for things like logo design or icon design or website design and they're really trying to put a round peg into a square hole in that situation because that's not what it's meant for and I'm not quite sure why this happened except that like I said Photoshop was really well known and so everybody just kind of defaulted to it. But when you think about this if you're trying to do anything that should be vector design that's going to try and use paths, trying to work with paths inside of Photoshop is well, it's pretty much a nightmare. It really is. I mean, it just, it doesn't make any sense. It's not intuitive. You have to switch to working on paths instead of layers. And it's really confusing to make that work. You never really produce good vector objects that way. Photoshop is really a raster based program. And the truth is most graphic design, especially graphic design that's not going to involve a lot of texture should be done in a vector based program like Adobe Illustrator or a theme designer or if you're looking for open source Inkscape. Now I have a whole video that you can check out about Adobe Illustrator and its alternative programs that I'll link to here so that you can see what all of those are. But really, if you're in graphic design, don't be relying on Photoshop for your vector work. You really need to be in a vector program for that. So stop using Photoshop if you're trying to use it for graphic design. The second thing is for drawing. Now for some reason, Photoshop developed it's like kind of the default drawing app for a lot of digital artists and I think it was just because they had a brush engine people could develop brushes for it and it was kind of the only thing out there for a long time but really there are better programs out there for raster drawing than Photoshop and the one that first comes to mind is Procreate and Procreate just it's so much better. It's so much better to be able to draw on an iPad with an Apple Pencil with something that was built for drawing instead of something that was really built for photo manipulation. Procreate is better in almost every way than Photoshop for doing art. And I know that if you don't have an iPad, maybe that's a reason that you're using Photoshop for art. But the truth is, if you cancel your Photoshop subscription, you could pretty quickly save enough money to purchase an iPad because the base model iPads can run Procreate fine. They're not that expensive. And also there are used iPad Pros on the market that are not that expensive. And if you're really serious about digital art, I think that you would see a great benefit from using Procreate. The one area where Procreate really is behind Photoshop is in filters and adjustment layers and using those in a non-destructive way. So if your workflow relies really heavily on filters and adjustment layers, then that might be a reason to stay with Photoshop over Procreate. But really, I think if you're trying to do digital art, it's time to stop using Photoshop move over to procreate the third thing is batch photo editing photoshop was never built to really edit batch photos the thing you have to do in order to batch edit photos in photoshop and i was guilty of doing this actually myself for a long time was to build an action with the specific things that you want to do that, that batch of photos but that's just really not efficient and there really shouldn't be very many people left that have photoshop and don't have lightroom because either you have all of the creative cloud and you have photoshop so you also have lightroom or you have the photography bundle. So you have Photoshop and also Lightroom. The only way to get Photoshop on its own these days is to actually subscribe to Photoshop separately, which I think actually costs more than subscribing to the photography bundle. So there's no reason to be doing that. So if you're trying batch edit photos, that should be done in Lightroom. It is so much more efficient, so much easier and faster and a better way to go. So stop doing your batch edits inside of Photoshop and switch over to Lightroom or some other batch editor like on one raw or capture one or darkroom or luminar there are quite a few out there but i still think in this category lightroom kind of is the best one because its engine just seems to work better but do not use photoshop for your batch photo edits 
So there's three reasons you should stop using Photoshop for these specific areas. And I also think that you can stop using Photoshop for your photo manipulation as well. If you just want to switch over to a program, which is a single purchase license, much easier than having to lock yourself into a subscription long term with Adobe, you can just purchase a mini photo and you can do pretty much anything that Photoshop can do. If you're looking for a free alternative, PhotoP is an online photo editor, which can do about 80 to 90% of what Photoshop can do, and it can do it all in the browser. Of course, it can be a little bit slower, but Photoshop is also pretty slow on some machines, so it might not be that big a deal depending on what machine you're using. If you're already using a slow machine, switching over to a web-based solution isn't going to be that bad, and it's free. PhotoP is completely free and can do most of what Photoshop does. So there's the reasons to stop using Photoshop. Go ahead, drop in the comments, let me know what you've been using Photoshop for, and if you're going to stop using Photoshop, or if there's something you think Photoshop has that you absolutely need, so you're going to continue to use Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.